That's not the abundant life God called you to. You have to remember who God is in your life. You have to remember what he came to do. When he sent his son, he did not only send his son to forgive us for sin, which is the greatest of all. But he also brought tools with him. He brought power with him. He brought healing with him to enable us to navigate through this maze of complications, to navigate through our own muddled mess. He gave us tools to enable us to climb up out of the pits that we have been buried under for so long. He's given us tools to forgive, tools to love in spite of, tools to hope in spite of a hopeless situation. Gave us the power, the grace. So to know who God is, you have to picture a rescue crew digging down in a deep pit, trying to pull out a little child who will die there if they don't get her out in time. Now, why is the child down in the pit? Because the child disobeyed mama or papa and got herself in a pickle that she couldn't get herself out of, which many of us do in life. And even though it's her fault that she's down there, the rescue crew is there, aren't they? Who called the rescue crew? The parents. Well, why did the parents call the rescue crew when the child is disobedient? The child made her bed, let her lay in it, right? No, that's not God's love. So the rescue crew, crew pulls out all stops to get that baby out of that hole. It may be a deep well, it may be a deep ditch, it may be a deep pit. The bottom line is we get ourselves in those pickles. And who do we cry out to? God. And who comes to our rescue? God. Not luck. God. Whether it's through the rescue crew, whether it's through finances, whether it's through legal representation, whether it's through favor, whatever the case is, God. Now, these are the pickles we get ourselves into, and God still gets us out. But then there are other cases where somebody throws you in a pit, like they did Joseph. Remember? The brothers were jealous of the father's love for Joseph. They threw him in a pit and were ready to kill him until one rose up and said, no, let's sell him off to slavery. At least that way we don't have his blood on our hands. This is bad enough. So they sell him and he's he goes into slavery and a whole bunch of mess goes down and lies get told on him and he gets put in jail. Now he's in prison, a real prison that he did not make. He's in prison because he did right. Now, check it out. What did God do? He left him there, didn't he? Now, if some of you who feel like God left you in your pickle, in your fix, in your predicament, you're angry with God, you're frustrated with God, you're bitter. Some of you have walked away from the church and the people of God from even trying to live for him because he didn't rescue you like you thought he should have rescued you. But wait a minute, you didn't read the end of that story, did you? From Genesis 40 to Genesis maybe 30, uh, 47 or so, right in there. You have to read the story because all those years, 16 some odd, 16 plus or minus years, he spent in prison. How cruel. But 
God had to work with the fullness of time and all that the enemy, all that his brothers, all that the devil worked against him, God worked for his good. How? You say. Because when the bottom line came and God said, time, time up. God worked for him to come out of that prison to, to interpret a dream. And when he interpreted the dream, he was given a ring. He was no longer a prisoner. He was freed. Not only was he free, but he was set up right beneath the highest ranking person in that country. Now, that's the kind of power and authority he had. Why? Because God promoted him. And God used man to do it through a dream that God interpreted, gave and interpreted through Joseph. Now, my point to that is God has divine destiny, divine design. He knows what he's doing. He has his plans laid out. So he's not a liar. He will, he will command his covenant. He will commit to fulfilling his covenant. God will not give you broken promises. If he promised you something, baby, it's done. Before you ever see the completion of it, it's done. He's committed to you when you're not committed to him. Now, I'm not talking about total backsliding. But God said, I'm married to the backslider too. There's a certain level of commitment there. But then his spirit will not always strive with you. So you must be careful, please. That's not the kind of turf you want to play on. Get back to the point. So now you know you have a committed father, a father that believes in the covenant he made with you. He established that covenant. He established certain precious promises for you. Are you going to believe them? Are you going to live for those promises? Or are you going to ignore them? And just expect to be let down like you have been let down by everybody else in your life. Psalm 72. Give the king thy judgment, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. He shall judge thy people with righteousness and thy poor with judgment. The mountains shall bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy, and he shall break in pieces the oppressors. They shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon endure throughout all generations. He shall come down like rain upon the mown grass as showers that water the earth. In his day shall the righteousness flourish and abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from river onto the ends of the earth. They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him and his enemies shall lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall bring presents. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. Yea, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. For he shall deliver the needy when he crieth, mm. the poor also, and him that hath no helper. Hang on right there. Listen, you guys. Listen, you just heard what, what Lynn read. Some of you have been oppressed for years. Some of you have been psychologically and emotionally cheated, neglected, starved, and you're extremely needy and dysfunctional. Some of you have a whole lot of hangups. Your hangups have hangups. You don't think God understands that? You don't think God has empathy for you? He feels what you feel. He's acquainted with our griefs. Oh 
God is so in tuned with us individually and collectively. We can't fathom the magnitude of, I can't even say the, I can't even find the words. It's just, he's just that, it's, it's crazy. It, it's overwhelming. It's, it's hard to fathom how in touch he is with us, with the feelings of our infirmities. And God is trying to reinforce your strength. He's trying to strengthen your faith in him. When you find yourself in a dilemma, when your enemies come against you, they're coming against God because you belong to him. Oh, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Sometimes when things come against us, people come against us, situations seem to short circuit our dreams, our plans, our aspirations, our goals, our vision, whatever. What happens is we tend to lose hope and we tend to collapse inside and our faith begins to wither away and we begin to uh, judge God the way that man has treated us according to man's flaky ways and fickle uh, activities. But listen, God is not fickle. God is not flaky. He is faithful and true. He will not fail you. I don't know who this is for. He will not fail you. He will never forsake you. He's already said how many times he is ever, ever mindful of his covenant with you. So, you cannot afford to throw in the towel. You've got to see this thing through to the end in order to see what he's going to do for you. Some of you will be shocked how God will rise up and fight for you. Some of you will be amazed of how God can remove your pain like it was never there. Some of you will be just dumbfounded by God's patience with you. by God's understanding of you. But the only way you get to see the salvation of the Lord, and I mean see it in demonstration, is by sticking with him through thick and thin. Because he's there with you, whether you see him or not. Even if you got to spend 16 years in it, when he pulls you out, baby, it's going to be worth every minute, every tear. It'll be worth it all. Okay. Is there any more, Lynn? <laughs> I want yes, you to finish. Two, yes. On 13, he shall spare the poor and needy and shall save the souls of the needy. He shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence, and precious shall their blood be in his sight. Mm, mm, mm. Do you get that? Did you really hear that? <laughs>